Hello and welcome to another episode of the Troy Francis podcast. With me, Troy Francis, it's Tuesday the 29th of September, nearly coming into the fourth quarter now of the year, exciting. And I'm coming at you in your ears with some glorious audio from my world-class secret abode somewhere in central London. And well, what a fun week it's been so far. What a fun couple of days we have had. Uh, Pretty relaxing weekends, chilled out with the girl we... Had a bit of a trip all over London, actually, on Sunday. It was pretty nice. We were over in the west side of town looking at some vintage stores. I picked up a a couple of nice little bargains over there around Notting Hill. Then we came back over east. We had a good uh, meal in the evening in an Indian place that uh, we know, which is in the East End. Very, very good food. So that was really nice. Watch some TV and generally relaxed and then cracking into a load of work on Monday. I did a live stream yesterday. If you don't know, by the way, I'm doing three live streams a week at the moment called CAD Live, Charisma and Dating Live. And basically, I talk about a topic at the start of the live stream for a little bit. Uh, and then I go into Q&A with the people who are watching. And it's been a lot of fun. And I may be making it more regu- I may be making it more frequent than three times a week. But at the moment, it's three times a week. Mondays at 11.30 a.m. EST. Wednesdays, 11.30 a.m. EST. And Fridays at the same time, 11.30 a.m. EST. So make sure that you head over to my YouTube channel. Or if you're there now, then hit subscribe. So you don't miss any of those wonderful broadcasts because they've been really good so far. We're getting good viewing figures, good live figures, and then good uh, watch figures afterwards for people who catch up on the replay. So a little bit of a plug there. Excuse me, I'm just going to drink a bit of coffee. And um, yesterday I was having a bit of a pop at uh, the so-called Black Pill. And I got some people coming back, having a pop at me, and it was all—it's all a lot of fun. It's all—it's all a lot of fun. But there's a serious note to it as well. There's a real, really serious undertone to all of that stuff. And so, if you haven't watched that live stream from yesterday, uh, which the title is something like uh, "Black Pill Grifters Are Harming Men," then I'd encourage you to watch because it was a good stream. Uh, We really got into some key issues. I really shared a lot of deep stuff and I think people enjoyed it and I think it needed to be said. I think some of the stuff that I said needed really needed to be said. And so if you haven't watched it yet, do go back and watch that. Anyway, we are back on audio today because I've been doing this audio podcast for ages since before I had a YouTube channel and it's been going up on iTunes and I've been a bit sporadic with the upload sometimes, but basically it's been going for three or four years now. So I want to keep this going. Gets me out to some different platforms other than YouTube, and it's all good. So today, what we're going to be talking about, and apologies, I know all these people who in the comments are like, oh my god, he was talking for three minutes before he got into the content. The intro was so long. So I'll try and get into the uh, meat and drink of it. Uh, now, we're going to be talking about flaking today, because it's a really key issue. I don't know if I've done a standalone piece of content, certainly not an audio or visual piece of content, about flaking Uh, And if I have, it would have been a long time ago. So I think it's something that we need to address because it's something that guys talk about a lot. Just before that, I'm not really flogging anything at the moment, to be honest, because CAD Academy, the course, is uh, won't be open again until later in the year. But if you would like to read some of my wonderful musings on dating, the dating industry, not the dating industry, sorry, uh, the dating scene, intergender dynamics and all of that good stuff, then you can get Renegade Dating Blueprint, which is a collection of 11 of my books, down below. So you will see a link to that down below. It's only $39. So yeah, jump on board. It's a good collection. Some good stuff in there for sure. So anyway, flaking, what about it? So what is flaking? Well, flaking is basically when you arrange a date with a girl and then the girl doesn't turn up, okay? And there are some slightly different. Um, there are some slightly different attitudes to this. 
or rather definitions of this, okay? So I suppose the, the simplest definition is basically you arrange a date with the girl, you turn up, you're standing there in your crumpled suit with some flowers from the garage, um, and um, <laughs> then she doesn't turn up and uh, you, um, uh, you, you go home embarrassed and then you cry yourself to sleep. So that's the sort of the bottom line definition of, of, of flaking, if you like. But there's other types of flake. It might not be quite as harsh as that. Like, for example, you may have arranged the date and you say, right, I'm going to meet you at 7 p.m. at so-and-so station or whatever. And um, you, um, <clears throat> you know, you're getting ready to go. And then an hour before she sends you a message and says something like, oh, sorry, I can't make it because my sister's had to leave the country or I've just got broken into or blah 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 or something like that you know she makes up an excuse but it's it's quite soon before the date was going to go ahead uh or supposed to go ahead fundamentally what this is about is that you have met the girl somewhere and you're arranging to meet up with her physically in order to have a drink or a coffee or a walk or whatever you're going to do and hopefully further the relationship in some way and she lets you down and usually at the last minute but she lets you down and the, the rug is pulled from under you and the meeting doesn't go ahead and, and very often this is a prelude to her ghosting you you know you, you're never going to see this girl again now sometimes that doesn't happen and if it doesn't happen then that's less of a concern so if you are supposed to be meeting her and then she sends you a message an hour or so before, but she says, listen, really sorry, but something's come up. You know, I've had to go and do X. You know, a ball, somebody kicked a ball through my the window of my apartment and I've got to stay here until the people come to repair it. So I'm not going to be able to come out. However, love to see you still. How about we do tomorrow night at the same time or how about we do Friday at the same time does that work for you now that's slightly different and I wouldn't count that as being flaking because in that instance she's offered an alternative she's she's come to you proactively and said look here's the problem this is why I'm not going to be able to arrive uh, however I do still want us to meet up so here's an alternative and I think with that that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, things things do happen, right? I mean, you know, it happens to the best of us, right? I mean, um, unforeseen circumstances arise. We've made a commitment. We're not able to to make that commitment, and so we, <clears throat> um, and so we, uh, you know, we have to tell the other person, and you know, we give them an option, and that's all good. That's how humans interact that's how it's meant to be so that doesn't really count as flaking that's something else that's a logistics issue okay and that should be easily resolved flaking is basically when you kind of had your hopes up you were going to meet up with this girl and then that meeting at her volition doesn't go ahead okay so guys will say and this is a question that i get a lot and people will leave comments on live streams and on Instagram and sort of say, so what do I do about this? And I think the, the long and the short of it is, first off, you, you kind of just have to accept. Like with so many things in life, acceptance is key, okay? Um, you have to just accept that this is something that happens out there in the dating game, right? Girls flake. Now, again, because this is an Equal Opportunities podcast... I won't, um, <laughs> I don't want to pretend that guys don't also flake. I have certainly been guilty of flaking myself. I have flaked on girls in the past, uh, in my in my naughty dating years. I've even flaked on girls internationally when I was meant to be in their country and I didn't even turn up to their country and flaked at the last minute. So um, flaking is not a, a purely female fault. And I'm not calling out women by talking about fake fake flaking as if it's something that only they do because it isn't however because this channel is largely aimed at men and it concerns male issues in terms of dating then i'm looking at it from that perspective and as i say acceptance is key you have to accept 
that if you're out and about, you're meeting lots of different girls, you're trying to get this side of your life handled, then flaking is something that is going to happen to you. And it's not really that big a deal, or it shouldn't be that big a deal. And ironically, the less of a big deal it is to you, the less you're going to find that it happens to you, okay? Because the better your mindset is around this stuff, the better you're going to come across to women. That is to say, the less the, you're going to come across less needy, all right? Because if you're incredibly needy and all the time you're like, oh my God, is she going to flake? Is she going to flake? What happens if she flakes? And all of that, then that is going to be apparent in your behavior in some very subtle ways. And she's going to pick up on that. And ironically, that is going to make her more likely to flake because she's going to get that sense of, this is a guy who's a bit needy. It's probably a guy who doesn't have that many options. There's something just a little bit edgy about him. I don't, not in a, you know, not in a good way. I mean, like on edge about him and... Yeah, I think maybe I'm just going to go to the cinema with my friend instead of going for that random coffee with him because I'm a bit tired anyway. I've just finished work and, you know, whatever. So like with much of the advice that I give on this channel, a lot of this is down to mindset and you control your mindset by the external values that you hold and by the way that you view yourself and the way that you interact with other people. And in terms of flaking, it comes back to the old thing, guys. It comes back to the cliched old line, which was being ridiculed recently on Twitter by some people. You are the prize. Now, if you genuinely regarded yourself as the prize, then the fact that some random girl who you likely don't even particularly know chooses to break a date with you shouldn't really be a big deal in the scheme of things, right? Because if you are awesome, if you are a fantastic dude, that really she's kind of lucky to be hanging out with, to get the opportunity to spend time with, then if she flakes, then that surely shows a deficiency in her character. That's nothing on you. You'd be almost thinking she's she's flaked. What is she? Is she nuts? And kind of chuckle about it to yourself and then forget all about it and go and do something else. And before the fact, that is to say before the date the, uh, has taken place or is arranged to take place, you shouldn't even really be considering the fact that she might flake. Because if you were that awesome dude, if you were Leonardo DiCaprio, if you were Justin Bieber... <laughs> insert the name of whichever Chad celebrity you want into the gap. But if you were that guy, then you wouldn't be sitting around worrying if she's going to flake because the basic assumption you would have would be, of course she's not going to flake because she gets a chance to hang out with me. Now, if she then does flake, well, you know, that's a bit silly. Why would she do that? Um, but all right, whatever, because you know that you have abundance. You know that there are plenty of other options available to you in this world and that you are an incredibly high value man and therefore it's not going to be tricky for you to avail yourself of those other options. And in, so in a way, this is about self-respect because pre the date, it's about having that self-respect which would make it almost unthinkable to you that somebody would choose to flake. And then if they then actually do flake, sorry about that, it's having that self-respect to think, well, I don't really get why they did that, but that's you know their choice, I guess. And now I'm just going to enjoy my night anyway. So the first thing really to say about flaking is you, you have to accept that it's part and parcel of life, of dating life in this modern degenerate world that we all live in and you have to realize well you need to get into the mindset that it's for a start it's, it's not going to happen to you because you're awesome and secondly if it does happen it's really not a big deal and it's her loss now of course inside because you know she's beautiful and you had your hopes built up and you think she's amazing and everything 
you're probably not going to be thinking, well, it's her loss. You're thinking, no, it's my loss, Troy. It's my loss. Look at her. She's amazing, uh, etc. But uh, that's not the way to think. Okay, that's really not the way to think. You know, she is just another human being. Uh, you are looking at her with rose-colored spectacles on. You are being intoxicated by her aesthetics. You are deluded and kind of bewitched by her beauty. And it's making you put her on a pedestal, which she doesn't deserve to be on any more than any of the rest of us deserve to be on a pedestal because... Um, she, you know, she is just an ordinary human being. And just because, for whatever reason, she's decided kind of at the 11th hour that maybe she doesn't want to meet up with you for a drink, that doesn't say anything statistically relevant about you as a human being. It doesn't reflect on your worth. It, it doesn't, you know, and as great as you may think she was, the truth of the matter is that there are plenty of other Women out there who are just as wonderful, just as pretty, just as intelligent, just as loving and affectionate and, you know, whatever other characteristics you're looking for. They are out there. It's just a question of you getting out there and and meeting them. So the next thing to say is that anyway, unfortunately, the concept of a date in the modern world is a little bit antiquated. And I guess I need to preface this by, again, going into what we're talking about here with flaking. Because when I'm discussing this, I'm imagining that you could have met this girl, this theoretical girl, by a number of means. You might have met her through Tinder. You might have met her through a dating app. So you guys may have been chatting on the dating app. And then you're, you know, like arranging to, to meet up for a drink, to meet for the first time. But equally, you could have met her through day game, that is to say a daytime approach in a coffee shop or a, a, a shopping center or a, a library or an art museum or something, an art gallery. Or you could have met her in the evening at a nightclub or a bar or whatever, and you took her phone number and now you guys are arranging to meet up. So this is all very much about the sort of classical, I suppose, multiple two-step or multiple step process of dating which is to say you meet the girl initially through one means or another you get contact details and then you meet up again in order to have a drink and then you either go forward and you end up becoming intimate with the girl or you break again then you go on another date and then maybe you become intimate after that or you know, in some cases, maybe there's even another date, but you know what I mean. So the model of getting together that I'm talking about here is the model whereby there are breaks in between, right, you meet, exchange contact details, meet up again, maybe have sex, maybe don't, maybe meet up again, after that, maybe get intimate, maybe don't, etc. And there's a couple of things on that. The first thing is that despite people arguing to the contrary, that is still very much the dominant model, I believe, in the West, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Canada, and in most of Europe, really. Western and Eastern Europe. Well, Eastern Europe, if anything, there's probably going to be more dates, even more dates than that. But, um, you know, the prevalence of hookup culture while it gets talked about a lot in the media and people wringing their hands over it and everything, and it, it has increased in one sense, I still believe it to be the norm that people will normally want to at least meet for a, a drink first or a coffee or something just to get a sense of each other in some like public third space that isn't her home and isn't your home. So on the one hand, this is a very natural, normal thing that everyone's doing. But on a, on a different sort of level, at the same time, because society is, is very permissive, in a way, the idea of a date is also a little bit antiquated. And even though most people are probably still doing the one date, two date, three date model, the top 20%... <laughs> that mythical or even the top 5% or whatever percentage you want to make up um, this week. But, you know, like the, the top guys 
are probably dating less and they are likely to be fast tracking to intimacy more quickly okay and that does alter women's perception of the marketplace because if they have encountered an alpha i hate to use the word but chad and things have progressed very quickly with that gentleman then if you are then coming along and proposing a two three day model model or that seems to be what you are you know looking at then inevitably she's going to compare you with the chat and she's going to sort of subconsciously probably but she's going to think things move very quickly with chat it just felt right it felt natural and this guy he wants to like meet me for frappuccinos at three in the afternoon and then go back to work i mean what's that all about and I'm not saying don't propose dates because, as I say, I still believe that this is the dominant way that most people get together. But you are also working against a societal tide whereby permissiveness, as the tradcons might say, is at an all-time high. And so there is a chance that, you know, um, if you haven't fast-tracked to intimacy very quickly, like almost on the first meeting, then... She's going to think that you are perhaps not the alpha that you might want to purport to be. And secondly, the likelihood is she has a great many options coming from other quarters. You know, I mean, she's on her dating apps. She's getting messages from guys. She's getting messages from the dudes on Instagram. She's being approached by guys in the daytime, you know, maybe in the nighttime as well. Depending on where she works, maybe she's getting offers from guys where she works. Say she's like a barista or she's a, a waitress or, you know, whatever. Um, so she is not short of options and she's being fed new options the whole time. And so any gap, any temporal gap between when you guys met and exchanged contact details versus when you are, you, you know, you're arranging the date for, there's the possibility that you're going to get gazumped by someone else. Now, that term gazumped, I'm not sure if that's just a British thing or if that's used internationally. Maybe it is. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But <clears throat> in the UK, the term gazumped is used in real estate. And basically what it means is, say you want to buy a property and you put in an offer on that property and it's accepted but then you don't get your finances sorted and then somebody else comes in and say they've just got the cash sitting there and they just say, we can give you the cash to, you know, today or tomorrow or they've got a mortgage that's been arranged already. Then that new buyer can slide in and scupper the deal. They can take the property from you because you haven't got your act together quick enough. It's called gazumping. And that same thing can happen in the dating world because... You know, while you're fiddling around trying to work out what the best Frappuccino place to take her in town is, and you're arranging that date for next Tuesday, in the meantime, some other Chad or Tyrone or, you know, whatever you want to call him, can encounter her and impress her and suggest a much quicker date. And then she's going to accept that and you are forgotten about. Or at least, if you're lucky, you'll put on the back burner, but you may well be forgotten about. Because it's the old thing of the, the new bright, shiny toy, the new bright, shiny object. And you may have been that momentarily. You know, when you met her in the bar or the club or whatever, you might have been the new bright, shiny object. Fair enough. But you don't stay that for long. You don't stay the new bright, shiny object forever, you know? the shininess wears off pretty damn quickly. And um, if somebody shinier and a bit prettier and whatever rolls in in between, then you are in a bit of trouble and you may not see her again. So dates can seem a bit antiquated and they can, if you don't get things moving quickly, then you can get blown out of the water. And this is why John MLD always says, uh, time kills all deals because the longer you leave it between initiating the deal in inverted commas that is to say you meet her you say hey you're cute 
I'd love to take you out. Let's exchange numbers. The longer between that bit and then the bit where you guys actually go out and actually have that drink and potentially actually become intimate, the longer that gap is, the more likely it is that somebody else is going to swoop in there and your window of opportunity is going to be lost, at least in the short term and likely forever. So you need to recognize that and you need to understand that one of the ways to, to avoid flaking is to keep the, is to get things moving quickly. Now, if when students of mine are doing day game, if they get a telephone number from a girl, I advise them to message her within the hour. You know, pretty much message them as soon as they walk away from her. Say, hey, it was great meeting you just now. You, you, you know, I know you look kind of crazy, but uh, there was definitely something I liked about you. Are you always that friendly to strangers? You know, sending her some cheeky message immediately because you want to get the ball rolling. Then hopefully she responds and then maybe respond back with something cheeky. And then later that night, you're saying to her, hey, listen, you know, uh, cool meeting you. We really have to grab, you know, really have to grab drinks. I know this awesome place. How about tomorrow at 8 p.m.? You know, you're getting that momentum going. You're getting that, that vibe going quickly. Because you're, and this is the next point, you have to understand that you've never, you haven't reached the finish line until you've reached the finish line, okay? You haven't, it, nothing is ever concluded until you've reached the final act, okay? And when you're in that interim or that early stage where, you know, you've exchanged numbers and there's been a bit of flirtation but nothing's happened, then you are vulnerable because you haven't reached the final stage, so really, you want to get things moving rapidly. And that's more exciting for the women in your life as well, by the way, because they kind of get bored, you know, like they want things to happen. They want to have a bit of excitement, a bit of intrigue. And if you create that kind of bubble around the two of you, it's like, well, I know we just met. I know this is a bit crazy, but like you, there's just something about you. Like we need, we need to meet up. Let's meet tomorrow. I know this cool place. And you keep the vibe going. That's kind of exciting. That's kind of a bit sexy. You know, that will get things firing on all cylinders. If it's if you try and play it cool and you, you last it out too long, you know, she's going to be looking elsewhere and other guys are going to be talking to her and, you know, you may lose your chance. It's very, very, very possible. And, and, and guys think, well, she was attracted to me. She, she fancied me. So why would it all go wrong? Well... It kind of does, because attraction is not that rare. I mean, she will be attracted to a number of guys probably a day that she sees to some degree or another, maybe maybe even more than that, you know, um, just in the same way that you will. I mean, you probably, if you walk around your city, maybe you see two, three, four, five, maybe more girls that you are attracted to. You know, attraction is natural, and it happens quite a lot, and... Um, for every human being. What is rarer is acting on that attraction and then making something happen. And so you have to be the instigator of that. You have to make something happen. And you have to make it seem like it's all happening very quickly because it's very natural. And it's kind of exciting. And you're doing that partly because it does add excitement and it does make it fun, but also because you are mindful of the fact that there is the possibility of your being usurped or gazumped if you don't put your foot down, as it were. Not put your foot down <laughs> in a demanding manner, but I mean, like, put your foot on the gas and get things moving. So don't count your blessings before they've, they've come true, okay? Because, you know, you never know when this is going to be, this could be snatched away from you. And that's why it's so important. Numbers, numbers, numbers. This is why it's so important to always be out there, always be sourcing, always be talking to new people, always be socializing, taking down phone numbers, taking down contact details, arranging to text, proposing, pitching dates, pitching drinks. Yeah, we'll meet for drinks, we'll meet for coffee, we'll meet for this. There's this great art exhibition, blah, blah, blah. You've got to be doing this constantly because some of this stuff is just going to fall away by the wayside, you know? And that's just how it goes. And because there's going to be collateral losses, if you like, then you've got to keep feeding the funnel at the top end by bringing more people into that funnel. That being said, and this is the final point, the way that you really solidify a number, and guys, 
talked about this. You talk about this, solidifying the number. That is to say, okay, so I can get a girl's phone number, but how do I make it sticky? How do I make it so she's not going to flake on me, so she's going to come and meet me for a date and more? People would say, well, you know, the longer you spend talking to her, the more solid that number's going to be because you're going to have built rapport and blah, blah, blah. I don't actually agree with that. In my view, it's not about the the length of time that you have spoken to her in that initial meeting, you know, when you first walked over and chatted her up. It's about the intensity of emotion that you made her feel. Because you can meet her, the girl, and you can chat to her for a very brief period of time, for like two minutes, even less, maybe a minute, whatever, you know, two minutes, couple of minutes, five minutes. And you can make such an impression on her that she wants to see you again. She's excited. She's thrilled. She's intrigued. She's curious. You know, maybe she's slightly nervous because you came across really cool. And she's like, well, this guy, there's something about him. And that's the feeling that you need to be encapsulating in her. Okay. Count, you know, compare that with the fact that you say you spend 15 minutes chatting to her or 20 minutes chatting to her at the dinner party, but you're boring AF and you're just talking about your 401k and your, you know, index fund investments and whatever, golf, you know. I mean, okay, you've spoken to her for longer, but you haven't made her feel as much. And ultimately, what's going to get her out, what's going to make her come out on that date is how you make her feel. So, and this, by the way, a little bit of a plug here, although it's not open at the moment, is what I teach in CAD Academy, the course, because what I'm really concerned with is not clever lines and it's not, you know, techniques and things like this. It's how you make the other person feel, okay? And a lot of it comes down to mindsets. A lot of it comes down to your ability with charisma, okay? And some other special secret ingredients as well that we teach in the course. So that's what you want to be getting at. You want to be making that kind of impression that she is just fascinated and she can't wait to meet you again. And you can do that very quickly. It doesn't need to be a long, drawn out, 25 minute, you know, conversation kind of a thing. But as I said, in summary, flaking happens. It's part and parcel of the game. And like with many things, you've just got to chalk it up to the game and accept it. It's not the end of the world. Really, ultimately, anyway, you want to get to a position where you've got so much going on, not just with with dating and girls, but with your life in general, that you're actually not that bothered, you know? You're sort of like, oh, do you know what? I I almost kind of hope she doesn't turn up tonight because, because to be honest, I've got so much on that I could use that time doing something else. And once you get to that mindset where you're really... You don't, you, you just, I mean, of course you want to see her, but you just, you don't care that much. Then, you, ironically, you'll find that they flake less, girls flake less, because you just seem so much less needy. You're somebody with a purpose. You've got stuff going on in your life, and that is ultimately much more attractive. It takes a while to get there, but, you know, ultimately this is about having interests outside of this stuff. It's about having a life. It's about having passions, projects, etc. you know? And when you get all of that, then the dating and the romantic stuff kind of slides into the background a little bit. And I, then, surprisingly, it starts to, to ease because you're putting less frenzied pressure on it. You're less obsessive and needy and all of that stuff. So anyway, there you go. That's a bit of a thing. A few thoughts on flaking. I'm going to leave it there for now. Do hit subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. If not, head over to YouTube, search Troy Francis, hit subscribe, hit the notifications bell, sign up for my free daily email. The link is in the description for this show. And also grab Renegade Dating Blueprint, which is the collection of 11 of my books that you can currently get. Uh, it's, It's a great bundle, loads and loads of information in there, and you will enjoy it very much. Okay, I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.